Bounty hunting hasn't really changed since the 1800s. They can utilize less lethal munitions, such as pepper spray, a taser. They're able to handcuff all those various different things. This is exactly what happens if he decided to shoot him. He could just say that they got into a fight and he had no choice but to shoot him and it's his word against the person's word because there's nobody else around. You gotta take her down or she'll shoot you. I think I underestimated her the first time I played this and she killed me. Hello everyone, this is Chris Kopp. I'm back with Gameology. We are about to find out what it was like being a bounty hunter in Red Dead Redemption. What are we doing? A little Experts React. $100 reward, the capture of dead or alive. So let's talk about bounty hunters from this time frame. But during this time frame, quite frankly, they didn't really care how you brought them in dead or alive. And I know I play Red Dead Redemption too, and it's great when you bring them in dead because you'll hear the sheriff or the constable say, well, he was gonna die anyways. He was gonna die at the end of the news. Now, did this give the bounty hunters the ability just to be able to say, well, I'm just gonna bring him in dead as the person's giving up? No, because there was still supposed to be a symbol of some law and order. And if it was shown that the bounty hunter murdered the bounty giving up, then that bounty hunter would be guilty, or not guilty, but could be alleged that he, commit, he or she committed murder. So so we do uh, have a semblance that there is some law and order going on in the West, but we do know it's the Wild West. So unless there was witnesses and that type of stuff, it was going to be the bounty hunter's word against his dead bounty. And uh, we know how that goes. In Red Dead Redemption 2, they don't want you just going and killing the bounties. You get more money by bringing in a live bounty. So there is some reward value to bringing him in alive. Um, now, as far as all the people protecting <laughs> the uh, the bounty, well, they really don't care right there. So uh, you could kill as many people as you need to kill. Anyone who plays this game for a while and you got to take your bounty back, you got to invest in the good rope because there's nothing worse than throwing this guy on your horse and you're riding away and you're kind of not paying attention. Then all of a sudden he jumps off because he escaped the uh, binding. So you definitely got to invest on the good rope. He's turning in the bounty alive, so he's gonna get more money. Regardless if the person gave up and said, I'm gonna go with you, we're gonna restrain them 100%. Bounty hunters restrain their bounties. Bounty hunting hasn't really changed since the 1800s. We still have bounty hunters. I mean, we all remember Dog the Bounty Hunter. I've never seen any armed. They can utilize less lethal munitions, such as pepper spray, a taser. They're able to handcuff all those various different things. So they're able to use those tools, but they can't just break in and pepper spray the guy. They have to allow that person an opportunity to give up. Not to say it doesn't happen. Oh, I remember this one. This is a cool one. She's there with the guy. <laughs> she hit him. Wow. And then you gotta take her out before she takes you out. She's evil. You gotta take her down or she'll shoot you. I think I underestimated her the first time I played this and she killed me. And what I love about Red Dead Redemption 2, there is like no nice way of taking anybody down. Everyone's like thrown down and hogtied and yep. I don't know if people know this, but as a police officer, we're not allowed, like if somebody was wanted, you know, dead or alive and say we caught them, that's just part of our job. We would not be getting the bounty. I mean, there, there are bounties where people get four or $5,000 for bringing the bounty in. That money would not be given to a police officer. We're, we're just exempt from that 100%. So let's actually talk about bounties real quick. What is a bounty? Back in this time frame, bounties were where people were wanted for crimes, all right? Sometimes they didn't even have their day in court. These were people that were alleged to have committed a crime. And so the sheriff or the constable puts their picture on the paper saying, here, is the bounty this is what we want for them want them dead or alive today bounty is more for people who skip bail someone's been arrested they pled guilty not guilty in court they posted bail and the bail agent said that this person will be guaranteed to come back into court and then they don't show up so a bail agent will hire bounty hunters to go find these people the bounty hunter gets a certain amount of money for bringing back that bounty back to the court system. So that's where, how bounties work. It's usually someone who's already had their day in court and posted bail. Okay. See, this is where I stress out. Sometimes there's a timer and you're like, oh, I gotta get there. Oh, see, that's it right there. That's what ends up happening. If you don't have the good rope, they untie themselves and they get going. 
So you got to invest in the good rope right away. That's exactly what happened to me. And I finally invested in the good rope. And then you got to beat him up again. This is exactly what happens if he decided to shoot him. He could just say that they got into a fight and he had no choice but to shoot him. And it's his word against the person's word because there's nobody else around. Because obviously back then, bounty hunters would be able to be armed. But technically, if you're armed, the only time that you can use a firearm is to protect yourself or others. It doesn't matter if you're a cop or not. That is the rule and the law when it comes to firearms. We do have wanted posters. Those are, those are law enforcement use only. We'll put a wanted poster for a suspect, the crime, their description, what they're wanted for. It'll be sent out to all the neighboring jurisdictions. That's what we use them for, but there's no such thing as wanted dead or alive. Is that, hey, we want this suspect. If you find them, arrest them, and we're gonna come get them. So this scenario here has gone in the past. Part of it kind of still exists, but that's with the whole court bail system today. See here, if this was a real scenario, in modern time, a bail agent would be able to use a taser, be able to use a baton, pepper spray to, you know, affect this arrest to get the bounty in custody because he's protecting himself or trying to prevent the bounty from escaping again. A bounty could theoretically be charged with additional crimes if they assaulted the bounty hunter, maybe broke into someone's house to hide, they could definitely add different charges, but that would need to be reported to local law enforcement so we could add those charges so they could be held accountable for that as well. But yeah, there's definitely things like that can happen. In order to do, I think, a certain level of bounty hunting, mimicking real life, Red Dead makes you buy a bounty hunter license so you can do the bounty hunter mission. So that actually mimics life per se, that you can't just randomly start doing these quests, that you actually have to be part of the bounty hunter license thing, lack of a better word. Oh, I should note though too here, while the Bales Bondsman is looking for this person, since this person skipped their court date, they would also have a law enforcement warrant for their arrest as well. So there's actually two wants. You have the Bales Bondsman that wants the person because they're gonna lose their money. And then you have the law enforcement want as well because the judge is gonna issue a warrant for this person's arrest. They're gonna issue an arrest warrant. So we have actually two going on. It's just a matter of who finds this person first. Oh, public executions. I believe the last public execution in Los Angeles County was in the 1920s, and it was a hanging. This was done for a couple of different reasons. Number one, execution is considered a deterrent as well as a punishment. The deterrent is, is hopefully people will see this and say, I won't do that, I won't commit murder. It was also done as the form of punishment. This is your punishment and we're going to hang you until you're dead. And that's you know what they, they would say. There were times, gas chamber, electric chair and hanging where the sentence was carried out and they didn't die. So they had to do it again and they hung them a second time or they electrocuted them a second time. There's plenty of stories like that that you could find throughout the history of our criminal justice system here in the United States. Pretty mad that sentence is death for robbery. See, I couldn't see that being true back then because of the simple fact that they wanted to send a message out that crime was not gonna be tolerated, especially when we consider the Wild West. You had a lawless land and law was trying to be established, so they needed to make punishment quick and harsh to deter people from committing crimes. Much of what we do today in law enforcement comes from this time frame. If you think about it, the 1850s, what is the one thing that these officers have in common with current officers. We all have a weapon on our side. A lot of the laws that we currently still enforce were from this time frame as well. What's kind of funny about the whole bow and arrow thing, I don't know if an arrow would be that lethal on everyone right away. Remember, bullets, knives, and other projectiles have to hit an organ. And even if you hit a vital organ, studies have shown that you have 45 seconds of life, even if a vital organ. So in 45 seconds, you could do a lot of damage. You're just not gonna drop dead. What's funny is this gameplay, we haven't seen anybody actually take out their bounty. Everyone so far has been brought in alive. I'm really suck at bringing in bounties alive. So um, no, normally my bounties are all dead just because I suck at gameplay, so. What is interesting about Red Dead having the bounty hunter missions is a simple fact that this does still exist, not to the degree that it did back in the 18 and early 1900s, but bounty hunters are still a part of our society. Once again, it's not so much a state 
sanctioned event anymore. This is based upon the private sector of Bales bondsmen trying to bring back their bounties so they can get their money. Because remember, Bales bondsmen will put up the majority of the money. If someone has a $100,000 bail, the family only has to come up with 5%. The rest is on the bail bondsman. So they lose and forfeit that money if that person never comes back. So that's why it's important for them to have good bounty hunters to go after these people so they can bring this person in. So this definitely still does exist. Bounty hunters are legally allowed to operate throughout the United States. Okay, who doesn't enjoy the bounty hunter missions in Red Dead Redemption 2? I know I do because I play them all the time. Remember to follow Gameology on both YouTube and Facebook, and don't forget to follow me as well, Chris the Cop. You can find me on YouTube. Until next time, peace. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, oh, bud. Hello, <laughs> bud. <laughs> All right, clear. We're clear.